Colorado coaching debut this Saturday at TCU, the number 17 team in the country. Here's what Dion had to say about the importance of culture to a program. Quote, I'm not welcoming to that word culture. What the heck does that mean? I don't think you have to have unity whatsoever. You have to have good players, unquote. Will Bond is Dion right? I, I agree with him. I don't know if he's right or not. I mean, the most, look, if, if culture isn't overrated, it's certainly overstated. All people do, the three things I hate to hear, and I want to break the TV set when I hear people say them, is so-and-so's going downhill, downhill in a short order, like about three years became the most stupidly overused word in all of sports talk, okay? And legacy. People are 21 years old. That next home run, how's it going to affect his legacy? I want to throw something and make it go through the screen and hit the person in the head who's using the word. Culture is there, too. There it's are a, very a few good places knowledge of how TV for works. which culture matters, right? The Miami right. Heat have a culture. Not everybody has one. Dion's, I don't know what it is. His team's probably going to have one, too. I know I'm going to root for Dion like his last name yeah. was Will Bond or my last name was Sanders. I'm a root for Dion that hard because I want Dion to make fools of all these people who want him out of college football and want him embarrassed. I want him to embarrass them. That's a compelling sport coat. Is that orange? Is that rust colored? Yeah. That Canali. looks really good. Orange. That looks good. All right, let Thank me you. answer this question about, uh, about Deion Sanders. I've sat okay. on the show as long as you've sat on the show, and you know that I hate the word culture. I think yeah. it is overrated. I think it gets yeah. too much credit when teams win. I think it gets too much heat when teams lose. I think it is a complete invention. And even if you look at teams, let's say the Patriots and the Warriors, and you think they have a culture, that comes across over a long period of time. It yes. is never yes. done overnight. So Deion yes. Sanders does not have to implement a culture he shouldn't even try. If it's going to happen, let it happen organically. What I agree with is how important good players are. And Mike, good players are acquired overnight. Overnight. You go to the transfer, transfer portal. portal. You no call shopping. Amazon. They deliver the player the next day. The next day. All yeah. Dion's referendum is very simple. Can he win? That's it. Can he win? Great players are going to want to play for him because he's in the Hall of Fame. Can he win? I take right? it that you, like I, am rooting very hard for Dion. Yes, because I would tell you that culture belongs in yogurt. Let's take a break. <laughs> Coming up is your boy Novak Djokovic or Lionel Messi, yeah. the goatier goat. And will Kyle Schwarber, that's my boy, Schwartz, finish the season with more home runs or singles? Toss-up is next. So you think if you throw something through a TV, it will hit the person talking. That's a very want, interesting I concept that on to TV, happen. which I think is the greatest of all time. So you might, somebody might take play, might take someone else. But again, you have to consider Messi as the greatest of all time. So to answer the question specifically, I'm going to pull a wolf on. I'm going to push because yeah. I don't yeah. know who's goatier. I don't. We may have the first in PTI history, a double push. I mean, Tony, <laughs> here's the thing. If Joker winds up winning this U.S. Open and he starts to get separation two and then three and then four, in a year's time, we could look back and say the answer to this question is Djokovic. No matter even, I think he's quirky as hell. You dislike him, you know, six on one hand, half, with it, uh, half dozen on another. Messier, there's no problem, especially for me. He's got the credential he didn't have, which is World Cup. It's messy. But, but it's not Pelé, messy. I don't Messier know that Pelé was player. even messy. I'm sorry. I don't messy, know that Pelé yeah. was even considered. I mean, Ballon d'Or came around about the time that Pelé yeah, did, right? Mid 50s. And Pelé it's after. is. You can always make a case for Pelé. You can always yeah. make a case for Pelé. I can always make a case for Willie Mays versus whoever comes along now. So or Ruth. For, so I, I guess. Because I, I, I can't do labor anymore. I was holding on to that like you. I'm, I'm holding not gonna on to do labor. labor and Margaret Court anymore against Serena labor. and Joker. I'm just not. Oh, Double I push. Got labor. What's next? What's next? Next. Toss up. What will Kyle Schwarber end up with more of? Home runs or singles? 
I love this question because it's unfathomable to me that somebody could really wonder, would you have more home runs or more singles? At the moment, because Schwarber got a single today and no home runs. He's got 37 home runs and 37 singles. And I think to myself, well, who could possibly have ever had more home runs and singles? Well, Barry Bonds did, 73 to 49 that year. And Mark McGuire did it five times. And Joey Gallo is twice and is in the process of doing it now. And if I'm Schwarber, I'm sort of happy to be in that company. Mike, you know this. Schwarber was only here for half a season in Washington. I loved him. He had about 18 home runs in June, it seemed. And none of them were cheap home runs. None of them. Nobody cared if he had any singles. At the moment, he has 37 home runs and 85 RBI. But so stop hocking me about singles. I mean, the guy is driving in 85 runs. Come on. Tony, I will tell you this. You know, my former neighbor... Kyle Schwarber, who I absolutely love. And I, I hope at some point, because he's been on a lot of teams, he comes back and he puts on the blue with the pinstripe in Chicago and hits in Wrigley Field again. I would just love that. Here's the thing. Nobody has ever hit 40 home runs and hit under 200 that we can find in our research. Nobody. Not Rob Deere, not Dave Kingman. People have hit 20-something and hit 40 home runs. Nobody's been under 200 with 40 home runs. It's amazing how baseball has evolved and, and the emphasis on certain things like launch angle. This is like, you know, launch and spin, you know, you know spin velocity and spin and what comes off the bat. All these spin numbers rate. have become, spin rate, become crazy. And Schwarber has a chance to be the first one. I don't want him... To go under 200, hit 40. I hope no, he gets it's up over 200. No, you don't want that at all. Over 200. Don't I don't want that, but I want him to get to 40. That'd be great. He can bang it, though. 85 RBI. Stop. That's it. Drive it Let's in. take one last 200. break. Still to ribbies. come, a sigh of relief from Bengals fans. They're idiots who tell you runs batted in don't count either. They're morons. Team USA rolls through pool play at the FIBA World Cup. Spin rate. I yeah, would tell you rate. that RBI is the most important thing in terms of run production. You're, You're driving, driving in a in. run. What's more yes. important than that? But there are, there are no. very often. I'm old now. I, I try to keep it muted, but this is not muted, yeah. is it? No. It looks, it's not Stephen it A. Great. It's not Stephen A. Pastel, but, you know, I do what I do. Looks good on you, Wang. Thanks. That's what they say in the movie, remember? Rodney Dangerfield says that. It's great. <laughs> Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, Joe Burrow returns to practice. The Angels wave six players, and Deion Sanders thinks team culture is overrated. But we begin today with Gabe Kapler's decision last night to keep his starting pitcher, Alex Cobb, in the game as he tried to no-hit the Reds. Cobb, who's 35 years old, threw a career-high 131 pitches. They lost the no-hitter with just one out to go in the ninth, and he stayed in through six more pitches to finish the game. Well, Bon, does Kapler deserve praise for leaving Cobb in to go for the no-no? No. What is that Chris Rock saying? You don't get praise for doing what you're supposed to do. That's what managers were supposed to do for the first 110 years of Major League Baseball history. Tony, I, look, good he left him in. I watched Major uh, MLB joined network joined that game in progress like eighth inning so you could see if he's going to pitch the no hitter and so i was watching it live i was glad he was left in he's 35 years old he's not 24 you're not 22 it's not like they're watching him going oh my god we don't know if his arm can take this even though apparently nowadays you don't know if anybody's arm can take it That's it's right. not bob That's gibson right. and ferguson jenkins and tom Seaver and gaylord perry I, it's not it's not, because those guys would go 131 every fourth day. They would. But this was cool. I liked seeing him in there. I was sorry when the hit re was registered. I, I wish that if it's going to happen for the Giants, it happens in the real uniforms, not those bogus uniforms they have that look like softball uniforms. But I I I I'm glad he was in there for a close, you know, for the duration. Yeah. So like you, I am not just old, but I'm also old school. Unlike you, yeah. I am applauding Kapler for leaving him in there. 35-year-old pitcher. This was his 25th start this year. He's been a this workhorse. Year. His family was there. You know, I mean, he's never had a no-hitter, so this was his chance at a small slice of immortality, and I think Kapler owed it to him. But there is another side to this that I think I ought to articulate here. 
The Giants are in the race for the wild card. At the moment, I believe they're a half game in on the wild card. They need to win games more than they need to have no hitters. I think it was 5 yeah. nothing late in the game. You could have taken this pitcher out. Now, we're not going to know how wise this is right now. We're going to have to wait for a couple of starts. 35-year-old pitcher. If in the next start or the next two starts he gets tagged or something happens to his arm because it's more pitches than he's ever thrown, then we're going to look back a little bit differently. Mike, the cautionary tale is Johan Santana when he was with the Mets. And he threw, and let me get the number right, he was 33 years old, pitches. younger than this guy, threw yeah. 134 pitches for a no-hitter. Yeah. The yeah. next 10 starts were his last 10 starts. He was 3-7 and seven with an 827 ERA, and after that he never pitched again. Mike, it's not hard to connect the dots. I'm just saying we're going to know down the road, right? Tony, not right now. Why is Santana the cautionary tale? Why isn't something that Gaylord Perry did the cautionary tale? Santana is not this guy. And you mentioned he's 35 right. years old. Well, How much more time does he have anyway? And by the way, he was dealing last night. Leave him in to protect the lead as long as you can, which I believed was, was articulated. So, no, I don't think it's a cautionary tale. I, you know, even if... Even if he doesn't have it in his next start, you want to be worried about that, give him an extra day. Switch the next start and make give him a sixth day off, for God's sake. Give everybody a month off. If this was the NBA, you'd be saying, really, another day off? Come on, enough. One month ago. Good to see you're not the grumpy. The Angels. I'm grumpy. I'm resting very grumpy. <laughs> the Angels <laughs> went all in a month ago. Now they're folding, bums. The team placed six players on waivers yesterday, Tone, including three for whom they just traded. Outfielder Randall Grichuk, reliever Ronaldo Lopez, and starter Lucas Giolito. Tony, you major in reading the tea leaves. So if you yeah. were impending free agent Shohei Otani, how would you see this? So if I was Shohei Otani, I would see this as my former team just did something fairly interesting. Because if I'm Shohei Otani... I'm not staying with the Angels at this point. Man, now, I'm going to give the wow. Angels a lot of credit. The Angels tried at the deadline. The Angels bought at the deadline. We sat here at the deadline and we praised the Angels. How would any of us have known that Lucas Giolito would go there? And how's this for numbers? One in five with a 6.89 ERA. It's terrible. Look, they tried. It didn't work. Since the trade deadline, if I have these numbers correct, the Angels are 7 and 18. They were a half game ahead of Seattle at that point. Now they're 12 and a half back. I sort of want to praise them for getting rid of these players so maybe these players can land on a contending team. But through the prism of Shohei Itani, that feels like it's over now. Well, this is going to be Shohei's, uh, Shohei Itani's decision. It's not about trading anymore. It's not about the Angels' decision. It's about his decision when we get there. Maybe That's right. this will allow some players to come up. We're getting, we're right at September tone. Some players to come up from the minors and show what they've got. Maybe there's a diamond in the rough. Maybe they find in their own farm system what they haven't been able to find through trades. And the Angels did a lot of stuff last offseason to buttress this roster. And that didn't work either. So, no. you know, maybe you go the old-fashioned way. Maybe you got some farm hands that can come up and show you what they've got. Maybe Shohei will be impressed by that. But, I, you know, Tone, I don't know what the tea leaves are. Maybe Shohei just wants to stay there. Maybe he likes Orange County. He likes playing in the sunshine of Southern California. Maybe he doesn't want to go and speculate it to Seattle. God help go us if he Dodgers. goes to any place in the East. If he goes to the Dodgers, Go to the okay. Dodgers. But, you go know, to the Here, maybe look, he'll just stay there. You can't, Mike, you cannot look at the Angels without using the phrase star-crossed. Look at yeah. Otani. He is likely to need another Tommy John surgery. He may never pitch again. Look at Trout. He gets hurt all the time now. He comes back for one game and he's out again. Look at Rendon. You can't because he's a ghost. That team takes one step forward and two steps back all the time. Five and steps. Parrish. We say all the time that Parrish, Kevin McHale, and Larry Bird form the greatest front court in the history of the NBA. We say Amen. all the time that Red Auerbach pulled off the steal of the century when he traded the number one pick in 1980, it turned out to be Joe Barry Carroll for Parrish and McHale. What we don't often say is that Parrish played the most games in NBA history, 1,611 over 21 seasons. That's even more games than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's 1,560. The current active leader is LeBron James with 1,421. 
That is 190 games behind Parrish, and it will require LeBron to play more than two full seasons to catch Parrish. LeBron is 38. Wilbon, do you think he will catch Parrish? Yeah, I think it may become important to him, and I hope LeBron is healthy enough to pursue if he wants to. Remember, Parrish didn't just play the games. He was great. He won four championships. Yes, the last one when he was pretty old with the Bulls. And my favorite Parrish thing is knocking Bill Lane Beer out down to the floor, two fists to the face, no foul called. Game seven in Boston Garden, Jess Kersey, way to go. Get up, Bill, get up. Happy anniversary, Andy Roddick. On this day 11 years ago, on Roddick's 30th birthday, the American tennis star announced that he was retiring after the completion of the U.S. Open in which he was playing. Roddick remains the last American man to win a major. He won the 2003 U.S. Open. Roddick also remains the last American man to play in a major final. He was in the 2009 Wimbledon final where he lost to Roger Federer. It's now 20 years since an American man has won a major, which seems incredible considering the American men who preceded Roddick by a decade or two. Jimmy Connors won eight majors. Andre Agassi won eight. John McEnroe won seven. Pete Sampras won 14. Well, Wilbon, what happened to American men? Man, I don't know, but I wonder if it's happening to American men in basketball who don't seem to be playing up to the level of the international competition in some quarters. I'm teasing. Uh, Tony, you used to make fun of me for liking and rooting for Andy Roddick and saying I thought he was a really terrific player and good for tennis. You want to you wanna no, adjust that? You want to walk that back a little bit? No, I, that's crazy. You must have me confused with someone else you've done no, the show with for I 22 don't. years. I loved Roddick. <laughs> loved it. Happy trails to pool play for Team USA. The United States team finished pool play at the World Cup 3-0 by crushing Jordan 110-62. Jordan couldn't have won this game if they had Michael Jordan. The U.S. will now go to the second round, play Montenegro next. Anthony Edwards continues to look like a tremendous player. 22 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists in 19 minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Steve Kerr took out all his starters late in the third quarter, including Josh Hart, who had started over Brandon Ingram. Ingram immediately looked comfortable with the second unit, getting five assists and seven points in 15 minutes. Tony, I've said to you, I think, sometime on the phone, since we haven't worked together for a month until today, this is the team I want representing the United States next year in the Summer Olympics. This team. If you want to add Stephen Curry, who I don't think has a gold, or or Devin Booker, you want to add them, fine. That's it. This should be the United States men's basketball team. They've earned it. So it would be the first time that we would go into an Olympics without really a plethora of big stars. Because they're not big yeah. stars. Not now. No. Not yet. Somewhere they, they're getting there. Okay. They'll make themselves bigger okay. stars. Good we'll see if them. they win this. They have to yeah. win this to become stars. They do. Let's go to the big finish. For me, this late summertime, then seeing the Mets 